When I say the word e-scooter to you, I bet the first thing that comes to mind is something like the Xiaomi M365, with its very narrow deck and standing scooting experience. Well, what if I told you this e-scooter comes with a seat, and packs quite the punch, all for under £500. This is the Wingu B9. Hello everybody, my name is Robert, and this is Clue. The first thing that you're probably going to notice about this scooter in terms of its design is just how small it is. This thing is mega compact and that's really a good thing, especially when it comes to a commuter scooter, because the last thing you want to be doing is lugging around a big heavy thing on the underground or taking it up flights of stairs if you're living in a flat like I do. If you need to, you can break the handlebar down as well and at around 13 kilograms, it really isn't that heavy either. With that compact design though, you do tend to sit quite low to the ground. It's almost like a moped in its design. The seat can obviously be adjusted up and down, but those handlebars are going to stay in one position. What that does mean is if you are on the taller side, you might feel a little bit cramped on this scooter. For me, it felt absolutely perfect. The deck is where your battery is and where you're going to be charging the device from. It's quite a wide deck, meaning that I could have both my feet on it while riding comfortably. And actually, that's pretty rare with e-scooters. I normally find that when I'm scooting around, I have to have my feet one in front of the other. I can't have them sat side by side, and that's something that I can do with this scooter, which means it is actually really, really comfortable to ride. It's actually really rare to see the charging port for these kinds of scooters on the top of the deck, but it totally makes sense. It's easy to get to, and once you put that plug in, it's pretty water resistant as well. You're not going to splash up water into it if you go through a puddle. If it is raining, obviously it is going to get a bit wet, but it's worth better protected than some other places I've seen it. The metal frame seems well built and comes in two main colours. This brilliant white and the slightly less understated neon green. In terms of preferences, I think I prefer the white one here because it's slightly less head turning than the neon green. You're already going to have people staring at you because it's such an odd design. You're so low to the ground that people will laugh at you and you might feel a little bit silly. But just bear in mind that you are going to get to your destination a lot quicker than they are walking. On the back of the scooter is where you're going to be putting that basket. This is an optional accessory, but I highly recommend putting it in, especially if you're going to be using this to commute. Because what it allows you to do is not have backpacks on and place whatever you need in that basket on the back. I use it a lot when I go shopping. For instance, if I'm just going out to get bread, milk, and maybe some eggs, I can put that safely in the basket, safe in my head and my mind that I haven't got this against my back, keeping it warm and it's nice and safe. On the stem of the device, you have those big bright white LED lights for safety when you're riding at night. You also have that back brake light as well. And on the handlebars is where all your controls are. These really aren't that in depth. On your left, you've basically got your power on and off switch and that big red button. Holding it for five seconds is going to turn on and off the lights for nighttime riding. On the other side, you've got that screen which really only shows you battery life. This is one of the worst displays I've ever seen on an e-scooter. You don't know how fast you're going and that battery life is just a little bit odd. It works out based upon how much draw that battery is taking. So if you're pushing it up a hill, then you're gonna show a much lower battery than you would going down a hill. You kind of have to take it with a pinch of salt. Underneath that, you've got a big green button. That one is to enable cruise control, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And you obviously have the throttle and the electronic brakes on either side. In terms of wheels, you have two 12 inch air filled tires. These are really good, nice big tyres, and what that means is it can soak up some of those bumps and potholes in the road. Being airfield, however, you will have to bear in mind that you're going to want to be careful of getting punctures. It's something that I see a lot with e-scooters, and I understand why many companies go with the hex design and non-airfield tyres. They're slightly less comfortable, but overall require less maintenance over time. Those wheels will even let you do a little bit of off-roading, and by that I mean you can take this on some dirt paths and you're not going to feel like you're going to skid out of control and it's actually going to be able to handle it. I wouldn't go full BMX track off-roading with this thing, it's simply not built for it. At the end of the day, this is a commuter scooter. 
Powering this whole device is that 350 watt motor on the back. This is actually more powerful than many e-scooters I've seen. Most I see are around the 250 mark. So to see that much better motor actually is really helpful, especially when you're living in a more hilly area like myself. It means that I can tackle those hills with little to no problems at all. That motor means that you can get up to a top speed of 12.5 miles an hour and you can have a range of around 10 miles. I feel like that's pretty good, but it is fair on the lower side when it comes to e-scooters. Others that I've used have had a much higher range, but I honestly don't mind it here because you're not going to be using this thing for longer journeys. This is for your short, last minute commutes. You, instead of taking the bus for those two stops, you could use this thing for instance. How is it to ride on a daily basis though? Well, if I'm being honest, this scooter has actually become my daily driver. It's small, compact, convenient, and most of all, fun. I've had little to no issues with range. I've managed to get it that 10 miles that it says that it can do. And actually, I think that's more than enough when you're looking at where you would want to be riding this thing. The brakes are mega powerful as well, and what that means is you can actually lean into corners and do little skids on this thing. I don't recommend doing it in public, do it on private roads, because obviously this is an e-scooter and they are still illegal in the UK. But I don't think I've ever smiled and giggled as much as I have riding this scooter. It's just silly fun. But that cruise control button truly does come in handy because you don't always want to be pulling back on the throttle to continue at a certain speed. So just getting to the speed that you want, hitting a button and cruising along is really, really useful. It is just a real shame that these things are not legal in the UK right now. The UK government really needs to step their game up and legalise these things because it really has helped me in my life. I'm visually impaired so I can't drive. I use this scooter on a daily basis to help me with everyday tasks like going food shopping. I hope that in the future more and more people can take advantage of the B9 with its comfort and ease of use. So I guess the question is, who is the B9 for? Well that's a really good question and I think if you're looking for a short range but fun moped style scooter that has a seat, this is absolutely a good buy for you. It's large battery, comfortable seat, built-in lights and that basket make it a perfect commuter scooter just for taking it those last few steps. Obviously, if you're going to be taking it long distances, this might not be the correct scooter for you. And if you want super high speeds and to take things off road, again, this just isn't for you. But if you're using it for just your daily commute, I can't recommend the B9 enough. Anyway guys, why don't you tell me what you thought of the B9 in the comments section down below. And of course, while you're down there, get subscribed as well. It means the absolute world to me. And um, my name is Robert, this has been Clue, and I will catch you in the next one. Adios.